Okay, so now we're going to look a little bit more at what sine and cosine are. Um, basically, when we do sine and cosine on our calculators, we're a little bit restricted because the answer we'll be given is basically between 0 and 90 degrees. We probably won't be given an answer for sine or cosine. When, we, when we're working at an angle, we won't be given an answer of greater than 90. And that's a real problem because sometimes when we're looking at triangles, we might be doing the sine rule or something, and we might have this angle at the top here which obviously is bigger than 90 degrees. Now if I do my sine A over A, sine B over B, and put that value in, I'm not going to get the correct answer coming up on my calculator, and I get an answer that's too small. So we need to look more in depth at what sine and cosine actually are, so we can actually tackle that problem. So, like I said before, sine and cosine are functions, and we can draw them on a graph. Okay, so... The maximum they go up to in the y plane is 1, and the minimum they go to is minus 1. Okay? Now, sine and cosine both look exactly the same. Okay? They're both what is known as a sine wave. Cosine is just a sine wave that starts somewhere slightly different on the graph. So a sine graph starts at 0. It basically looks like this. And it goes on forever. It will go on fluctuating like that forever. That's called a sine wave. Okay? And basically, one complete revolution where it comes back and will then start repeating itself is 360 degrees. So that's 360 degrees there. So that's 180. Okay? Here is 90. And here is 270. Okay? I'll draw you the cosine wave here. Okay, so again, the maximum it goes to is 1, the minimum it goes to is minus 1. Okay, so if cosine starts at 1, so then it falls away. So that's what cosine looks like. It starts at 1. So in cosine's case, 90 is here, 180. 270 and 360 brings it right back to the start. So this is our cosine and this is our sine wave. Okay? They're both, the shape of them is both called a sine wave. Sine graph just starts at zero, cosine graph just starts at one. So like I was saying, our problem is when we type into the calculator, the calculator only goes up to 90 degrees. Okay? So the calculator won't give us an answer after 90 degrees. Which can be a real problem, like I said, with that bigger graph. Now, <clears throat> let's say it comes in and it tells us a reading. What the calculator is essentially doing, it's got this graph programmed into it, and it essentially just reads off. So if you, let's say it's 0.7, what you type in, the inverse sign, it'll read across, and then read down, and it will tell you what that figure is. So if I do 0 0.7 inverse sign on my calculator, It will do that, it will read across and then down. It will tell me it's 44 degrees. But what if what I wanted was actually slightly bigger than 90? Because look, this has got two answers. It's actually got even more answers further up here. But we know our answer is not going to be bigger than 180. But we do know it's got even more answers up here. Well, actually, what we do know is that a sine wave is symmetrical about the 90 degree point, about the maximum, okay? So this is basically a mirror image here. So, if I'm 46 distance away here, yeah, because I'm a distance of 46 away, then I'm gonna be a distance of 46 away here. So it's gonna have to be 90 plus 46. So that value there is gonna be 136. So I can quickly work out, if I've got my bigger triangle, that my calculator is telling me it should be 44. 
can quickly go, actually, no, it's not 44. It must be, draw my graph, it must be 90. 46 is a difference, so I must add that back on. And then that would then be 136. Okay, and the same with the cosine graph, you, you're not going to suffer too badly because you're going to get a negative number if it's between 1 and 80, um, between 90 and 180. So you, you can get away with it a little bit more with the cosine. But with sine, you need to know what that is. And then we know that we're going to get even more points further up here. I'm going to get one here. I'm going to get one here. And what on earth would the values of those be? Well, they'd just be 360, which is here, add on these two values. So this one would be 404, and this one would be 496. Just be 360, add on these two values. Sorry, that would be 136. That difference against there is 46. Making things confusing here. So we can see exactly how it works. Let's just look at that very quickly again. We've got our sine graph. Okay, and now we let's try. 0.85. So remember, this is 90, this is 180. Okay, so minus sine of 0.85. So it gives us 58. Okay, so 58.2. If we want to be really accurate. So what's the distance it is away from 90? So 90 minus 58.2 is 31.8. So the distance here again must be 31.8. So I must add 90 onto that. It tells me that the other value must be 121.8. OK? Must be 121.8. And that's, that's it basically. If we had to do it with cosine, if we wanted all the angles on cosine, so let's do 0 0.85 again. So 0 0.85 shift cos. We find it's 31.7. Okay. We find that it's 31.7, 31.8 actually. Okay, and we need to know all the other ones that are on the graph. Okay, well, we know 360, we know this one is going to be three, add 360. Okay, so this is going to be 39, 1.8. Is that distance, it's just the same point again. So that distance there is going to be 31.8. What about this one? Well, again, we can see straight away, it's a mirror image again. It's going to be 31.8. So this time it's going to be 360, take away 31.8. And that gives us 328.2. two. So that value there is 328.2. And that's what we do, that's sine and cosine graphs. Now, you do need to know them for exactly this example that I just gave. And questions do come up just based on sine and cosine graphs. The other thing is, they're just quite interesting. You, obviously, your, your mum and dad, when they went to school, they didn't have calculators that did sine and cos for them. So how on earth did they do it? Well, they had a thing called a slide rule. And all a slide rule was, was something like this. It basically had one minus one on it. And then 
sine between 0 and 180 degrees. And then it just had all the markings on it. And this one and minus one just slid. So if you had to find 0.85, you just slide that across until it was just over the top. And then it would have a line on it, and you could read it off. And actually, that's what they used to do. That's what a slider was. Just a little slider for the sine and cosine graph on the back. But anyway, there's a few questions on this in the booklet, and then we're going to do some questions on how we stretching and, and, and compressing and doing other crazy things to graphs and functions and stuff like that.